Hey everyone, <clears throat> excuse me, it's day three of the 12 days of Christmas painting ornaments and tonight we're going to paint a church, a fun church. So I posted last night that the background should be blue, any color blue, doesn't matter what it is. Um, what color blue it is, if you add white with it, if you leave it dark blue, whatever your fancy is. So I have a combination of dark ones and light ones. And this one, I even made a little bit of texture with it. Um, so those are all painted and ready to go. And this one is pretty easy. I know some of you struggle with my pretty easy, but <laughs> um, it is pretty easy. I do, I haven't figured out StreamYard yet. So I do have my camera on a different tripod pod that I flip down and you should be able to see pretty close up and watch this. So if you can paint rectangles and triangles and circles, you got it covered. You don't need anything else. No, nothing more than that. So you can figure out whatever color you want for your door and your window. I painted all four of these in a different one. I'm not real crazy about my pink, but I thought I'd give it a try. Um, this is old 57. I don't mind that one. It's kind of fun, a little quirky. Aviary and Bohemian Blue, I do like. So I probably will stick with those. So I'm going to take my flannel off. It's cold here. Well, it's not. It was a nice fall day, but sun went down. So now it's cold, in my opinion. All right, the first thing that I'm going to do is, um, last week, I drew the ornament onto my sketch board, my sketch pad, and then I drew it out in a magic marker so you could see the shapes. We're going to do that again tonight, and I'm going to show you the shapes. I should probably pull you up on my iPad so that I can read comments. Not questions. Oops, They're gonna uh, 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 and... Sorry about that. Um, okay. So let's go home and see if I can find myself. I am right there. Okay. Lori says hello. Lori also Henderson also says hello from Indiana. Mary says hi, hi. Um, if you send 100 stars to this live, I will enter you in a chance to win an entire 12 day set of ornaments that I will send to whoever I draw from the entire 12 days. So if you send 100 stars, you be entered in there for as many times as you send a hundred, and then um, I will send out one complete set of ornaments. So last week we painted, I got them over here. I'm putting them off to the side so I don't lose them. So we painted a holly, and then we also painted a cardinal. Tonight we are adding the church to this mix. So just kind of another whole fun element. And then tomorrow night, we're gonna add a mushroom, a holiday mushroom. Mushrooms are in, I don't know. So I decided to do a mushroom, make it kind of fun. So that's tomorrow night. These, if you do 100 stars, you could win an entire 12 day set of these. So we're gonna get right down to it. Um, thank you, Lisa. 
for the shower. <laughs> Hello, Sandy. All right, I'm gonna scoot you down and then hopefully I'm gonna hit your comments when I can't see my phone any longer. So bear with me as I practiced last night to put this in the down position. And I have to figure out where I'm at. Okay. Okay, I think we're too close. So I'm going to, sorry, if you get seasick, you might wanna look away for a minute. Whoop! <laughs> this stand is a challenge. Okay, it's this one I gotta move. All right, I'm not gonna lose you, I promise. I promise. Oh, I gotta loosen this one too. Oh boy. See, I should probably put you up. If I could figure out two darn devices, I'd be okay. But I don't have time to mess around with that. All right, <laughs> did I lose y'all? All right, you know what I should have did? I should have turned you over. Okay, we're gonna try and do it from under here. Oh no, don't do that, hang on. Hang on. I just snapped you off the stand. Um, get rid of that. Okay. <coughs> they moved my button. There it is. Okay, now I'm gonna put you back on. All right, we should be good. I'm gonna leave it alone. <coughs> I need a drink of water. Let's move you this way a little bit. You know what, by the time the 12 days are done, We'll have this lit. I don't know what I'm doing. Probably not. But I can think I will. Okay. Hello there, Corinne. How come my stars were only 99? How do I send one more? It's okay, Lisa. I, I, 99 will be fine. Hey, from Park Falls. Uh, we used to have a cabin up there. Thank you, Lisa, for the stars. Thank you, Kathy, for the stars. We used to have a cabin in Fifield, so near Park Falls. Um, uh, Where do I gotta go here? Okay, this sketchbook is just a little bit big compared to the ornaments, so I think as soon as we get to the ornaments, we will be fine. But you can pretty much see all that. So here is my church and I'm going to show you how we sketch out the church with just some fun little shapes. Okay, so the first one is a rectangle with a triangle top. So you're just going to 
draw a rectangle and make a triangular top. Right, like that. And then above that, you're going to make another triangle that connects to that roof line, like that. Okay? Oh, thank you, Laura. Thank you for the stars. And then your roof line is gonna come out here a little bit. I just want it to look like it's supposed to be out here. I always like to make my lines a little on the messy side. So I just scribble them in there. Your church can either have a cross up there on the top, but that's kind of where the hangers go in. So for this church, I'm putting it right here, right on the first roof line. And then we're just going to make a rectangle with a circle top. Put a line through it and there's your door. Did you ever do that where you lock your hands like this when you were a kid and then it was, look at the steeple, look at the temple, I don't remember, open the door and see all the people? All right, then uh, this is just a small little oval. It's a window up there, kind of a stained glassy window. And then that one also I put a cross in. And then over here on the side is a tree that we're going to paint and it's gonna look a heck of a lot better than this tree right here. So you can move this church over to the side a little bit if you want. I gotta get you right in the view. Um, you can move it over to the side a little bit so that it's not quite in the center of the ornament and then your tree will fit on there better. So we'll do that as soon as we get to our ornaments. Oh, and then, it, so there's snow down here. So we're gonna paint that white. And then to make it look like a snow globe, we're just gonna take some white paint and make some lines. So it's like, um, it's like reflecting. It's glass, it's reflecting. That's it, pretty simple. All right, if you wanna screenshot that, you can go ahead and do that. I'll give you a few minutes. Some people like to screenshot it so that they can, you know, look at it on their phone or their computer and take try these ornaments. All right. We're going to get right to the ornaments. Hopefully you'll be able to see them. I have to move my camera again. One minute. We are way too close. I have to unloosen both of them. That doesn't make sense to me. Okay. I think I got you far enough away now. And then you gotta be a muscle man to tighten these suckers. Or they just start to shrink back down. Okay, I'm done messing with you. Now your four inch ornaments are gonna have a hole at the top. You're gonna wanna make sure you put the hole at the top. And I gotta move these up a touch and this way a touch. Should be good. The ornaments are smaller, so we I am using the six inch Artist Loft Filbert brush. One of my favorites. One of my absolute favorites. So we wanna put a base down first. This white church is not all white. 
it has a shadow over here. And then we come back in and we do a little bit of white on it. This one also shows that. So it's darker over here and whiter over here. So what that does is it makes it look like it's not flat. Because if you painted all of this completely white, the front of this church would look really flat. And that, so what it does is it gives it a little bit of depth. So we're gonna do that with skeleton key. I have my plate right here. I'm gonna put some skeleton key onto my plate. And then also I was out of beadboard, so I am, my white of choice tonight is vintage linen. I am a beadboard fan but I need, I was out and I needed to order some and it's actually in my car right now. So I didn't have any beadboard last night to grab any. Okay, so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that skeleton key and I'm gonna move it over a touch. I'm gonna make that rectangle with that triangle on the top. <coughs> oh, sorry. I don't know where that came from. You'd think my grandkids were here. I'm allergic to them. <laughs> not allergic to them, I'm allergic to their animals. All right, go ahead and get that gray down. And then we're gonna make this rectangle on top. Whoops, not rectangle, triangle. Gonna fill that in. That's where you're gonna stop. Now we're gonna do all four of these. I'm gonna go a little bit faster this time so I can get all four of them done. If you are painting along with me tonight, welcome, welcome. If you're new, welcome. If you send me 99 stars or 100 stars, um, some people only have the option of 99 stars, um, you will be entered into, whoops, I did it again. Some of my churches have a rectangle roof, but there's not enough room for this one to have a rectangle roof. Um, you will be entered to win the set of 12 ornaments after we're completely done with all the lives. So a hundred stars will get you entered. All right, they don't look like much. They'll get there. What is the background color? It is Hay Sailor mixed with um, beadboard. Bobby says DIY. <laughs> and thank you, Bobby. Did you use skeleton key? It looks more blue tonight. Yes, I did. It is skeleton key. It probably looks more blue because it's going on a blue background. So it's picking up that blue hint. Yes, it is skeleton key. Sometimes skeleton key can come off as a blue. Like, that is the accent color in my new bathroom. 
And I would have never thought that because I picked out blue. But if you look at, I looked at all the DIY colors and that skeleton key is the one that matches the closest. Which is crazy, but it is blue. So if you need to make a triangle, you can make a triangle right there. And then from the triangle, you can make a rectangle. Just smooth all those brush strokes together so you don't have a line on the front of your church. And then we're gonna make the steeple. like that okay switching out so now what we want to do is add that white in so I'm gonna go in with regular white I better do this one with just vintage linen is what I have on my brush right now and I'm gonna make this one side of the church whiter. And the same with the steeple. And I'm bringing my roof line down with the white. It'll give you a nice fun effect in a little bit. Then we're gonna blend some of that skeleton key into the white to give it a little bit more blended versus stark white. So pick up between the two colors, just keep picking them up until you get something that you like. So we're gonna go with that. So there's the difference in the two. You can actually see the roof line. Kinda of looks like a gnome, doesn't it? I have a hard time painting gnomes. Apparently I just need to paint a church. Hello, Judy. Danelle, welcome from Pennsylvania. Thank you, thank you for watching. All right, I'm just going in with a little bit of vintage linen. There's skeleton keys on here already. Highlighting this one side of the church to make it look like it's more 3D. Now I'm gonna go in to the roof line with some white. Why I'm using white is because it's going to have snow on it anyway. It saves me a step. Then Using your skeleton key and your white, blend those two together. And if you're using DIY paints, they blend very easily. If you're not using DIY, you might have a little bit difficulty blending those colors together. Two more. So I'm gonna exaggerate this one a little bit and not blend it. We're gonna see how that looks on one of them. <laughs> if I can, I don't know if I can. Okay, that one I didn't blend very much. You can see the difference between the blended and the not blended. So if you're not working with DIY paints, you might be struggling a little bit. I gotta get a little bit more vintage linen.
Doing this one side, though, will give you a lot of dimension. And then doing this roof line in the white, it really is kind of fun. So I am going to blend this one with a little bit of skeleton key. They do look like gnomes, not gonna lie. So we are going to use aviary. Whoops, I splashed my water all over them. I'm not watercoloring, but apparently I thought I was. So it's for a fun little twist, This one, I'm going to, we'll do this one right here since it's not wet. Um, I'm going to make the door in the aviary. So you're making a rectangle with a circular top. If you're using a filbert brush, it's very easy to do that. You just go up and go around and your brush is going to make that edge for you. And then I'm gonna add a touch of white to it. And then the circular window up on top. with a touch of white. That highlight's gonna be on the same side as the highlight on the church. Now what you can do for fun is you can add a little bit of this green into your church if you want. Just adding that fun color in there. Okay, we have the green out, so we're gonna do some trees. I am still using this six inch filbert brush, and I'm gonna go, I just put some paint on my brush, a little bit of paint like this, and I'm gonna make my tippy top of my tree, I'm gonna come down with the side of my brush, and then I'm gonna start to go back and forth, kind of pouncing motion, making a tree shape. This tree is going to be in front of my church, so it's gonna go right over the roof line. You're gonna make it skip all over. You can see some of that blue in the background. So now I need to lighten my green up a little bit, so it's a little bit of aviary and vintage linen. So it's got a light green. If you don't have skeleton key, what color would you use? Where is my buddy again tonight? <laughs> He's here. He's just not saying anything, Bobby. All right. Now we're going to go in with a little lighter aviary and not cover the whole thing, but just make some fun little brush strokes, leaving still some of that blue for a little bit of interest making that tree right like that. We're gonna leave that tree totally alone. Okay, so if you don't have skeleton key, you could use letterpress gray. It just won't be as blue, but it'll still be a shadow. I never used skeleton key until um, Dionne Woods had some kind of, this was right after I started in DIY, being a DIY retailer. Um, she had some type of contest or something on her, on her Facebook page. You had to paint something. And so I, 
added my painting in there and I won. And she sent me four, I think it was four DIY colors. And one was skeleton key. And I thought, what am I ever gonna do with this? Um, I use that all the time. It's so pretty. But I was a retailer and I never opened a can of it. Two more trees. You can't go wrong with these trees. You're not gonna make them wrong. Just start at the tippity top, make a line down, and then move your brush back and forth very quickly. You also wanna make sure that you hit some branches in the front. You don't want the tree to just be um, swooshes left to right. You want some branches to be hanging down the front side too. See right there, those branches are hanging down in front. And then these are swooping off to the side. One more. Make it tippy top, thin as you can, and then start going back and forth. And when I do this, I basically get all the paint off my brush. So I go every different way out with my brush using everything that's on my paintbrush. Trees are fun. If you haven't ever painted a tree like this, you have to, it's so fun. You can't go wrong. They just always turn out, no matter what. It looks like a tree, right? It was pretty darn easy. This one's not quite white enough. So I'm gonna go back over this one, add in a third color. Bobby says, hi, Wilson. It's not the same without you. <laughs> He'll be back. Let me tell you, Bobby, it's as hard for him as it is for you. I told him he has to let me be a little bit professional for 12 days. <laughs> okay. Now we're going to use some Bohemian Blue on the door. I did really like the Bohemian Blue. That's another, that was one of my first colors that I ordered when I became a DIY retailer. I actually ordered Bohemian Blue before I even be, just to try the paint out and I loved it. Okay, we're gonna go in with that rectangle, drag my brush around to make the door. Little circle window at the top. Big or as little as you want it. Little vintage linen. Oh, you know what? I'm actually putting that shadow on the wrong side. I forget. If your church is white on this side or light on this side, your shadow has to be on that side. So let's try this again. Ah. Okay, better. 
Now, what color can we use? Old 57. Let's use old 57. And then I need help with my third, my fourth color because I didn't like my kissing booth. I didn't like that one. These churches are really simple and fun. So I hope whoever wants to try this gives it a whirl because they are so much fun. And then I'm gonna hit it with a little bit of white on the opposite side. One more. Did I have any suggestions? Nope. Okay, I gotta pick whatever color I got here. Um, let's mix some old 57 and Bohemian Blue together. I don't know what that makes, but we're gonna find out. Oh, it makes kind of like a mermaid tail. A tealish. We're gonna go in with a little bit more old 57. A tealish blue color. I swear I was going to say Bohemian Blue. <laughs> Farm Fresh, that would have been a good one. How about Sea Glass? Yes, those would have been all great colors. I do like the blues. <clears throat> I like the blues and the greens on the doors. Like the kissing booth that I did, I just didn't like that one. It Too much of a contrast. Farm Fresh, that would have been a good one. Pedal Pusher, that would have been great. All right. Guess what? We are almost done. My, 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 my. This was quick tonight. We're going to go in with some snow on the bottom. Just a little vintage linen. I happen to have some blue in my brush, which is perfect, because you want a little bit of shadow in your snow. So that blue is causing a nice shadow in the snow, giving it a little bit of depth. <laughs> Getting thirsty. Bobby and Lisa and uh, Judy, go ahead. <laughs> you girls have a party. I actually have put, this is just plain vintage linen. I've actually put these videos on my YouTube channel for those that don't have Facebook. So if you like to watch on YouTube better than Facebook, you can head on over there and catch me on that one. It's the same video. I don't edit it. I just don't have time to edit it. But you can actually watch on YouTube if you like. So when you go over with just white and you leave some of that blue coming through, 
It's gonna make a nice shadow in your snow, making it look like there's some drifts or like this one's really good. It's got some really nice, I probably was off camera there, sorry guys. Um, it's got some really good, my <laughs> tripod thing keeps losing. And falling down. So I think I'm in the right spot, but then again, I'm not. Okay. And this one. So when you put your bright white right over top of whatever you, if you got a little bit of blue or green or whatever color in there, it's going to make it pop. Now we're gonna use some of that bright white and go into this tree, giving it a little snow. It's just a little bit more snow covered tree. All of these different layers are important to make it look artistic, have a little character. So you need all of these layers. You can see I'm not painting loose tonight. Look at how close I'm holding my paintbrush. No looseness tonight with these churches. I'm all uptight here. Okay. We are to the little black dress step. So I need little black dress and it needs to be watered down just a touch. Mine is already watered down because it's at the end of my jar. And then we're gonna make some lines. So if you want to be a little messy, go ahead and do that. Apparently, am I black isn't watered down enough. We're gonna go around the door. And then make some doorknobs so they can get in the church, open the doors and see all the people. And then this is where your roof line is gonna come in. So you're just outlining this and it's gonna make it look like there's already snow on it. So you saved yourself a big step by making that white line. If, it, if it's not enough, you can go back and add some more to it. And that's it for county lines. We still have a little bit more to do. So don't go anywhere. We got all these county lines to do. I purposely scribble so you don't have to be quite so neat. Let me make sure I'm in camera here. There we go. That wall wasn't straight. It was painted at a little crooked. 
but it's okay. I, I just made my line straight, which helped it become straight. You can do loose at the end. <laughs> yup. Bobby says I'm loose. <laughs> the black makes it. It does. I have to admit, I really do like my Connie lines. On some of them, though, I don't, like my trees, I don't really like it. That's why I'm not going to do some Connie lines on my trees. Oh, I forgot my window. And my cross in my window. Let's do this window here. Okay, this is our Bohemian Blue and Old 57 church. So if you have a hard time making a straight line, don't. Just make a scribbly line. And then we're going to make the door. Outline the stained glass window. Put the little cross in there. I need a little bit more squiggle right here. One more. Thank you, Sheila. Oh yeah, we got a splatter of snow. You are right, Denise. We got a splatter of snow. And we gotta get our copper out because I need a copper cross on the top of the church. This is just the old 57. It's nice and bright and white. I need a touch more little black dress. What's that? Touch of water. Okay. Copper, pennies from heaven is what we're gonna use now, and I'm just going to put the cross on top of there. Whoops, I gotta leave it up here. The cross goes on top of this first roof line. And it's gonna be rounded on that side, and I have a hard time rounding it on the other side when I um, am working with my brush. So I have to turn it around and come back in from the other side. That copper cross on the church is gorgeous. So I go in on this side and when I come over here, I can't make the rounded 
edge like I do over here with this side of my brush. So I have to turn it around and use my brush to make that rounded side. And one more. Thank you, Sheila, for the 100 stars. Stephanie said the black just makes it come alive. Judy said, thought you were going to say, don't DIY if you can't make a straight line. No. <laughs> yeah, try not to do any more DIYs, Judy, so you can make that straight line. <laughs> Laura, thank you, this is so fun. It's an easy one. Barbara says I'll have to watch the replay. You do that, it's out there. I will post it also on YouTube. We're not done yet. We're not done yet. We gotta do some splatter snow. If you think the Connie lines make it come to life, the splatter snow really does make the ornaments come to life. So I'm gonna go ahead and, oh, this darn thing. Nope. Still gotta be over here. Okay. We're gonna get this done pretty quickly. So you need a scruffier brush. We're gonna use a scruffy brush like this. And then I'm going in with vintage linen on my paper plate and misting it with water. So it's nice and soupy. It's like ink consistency. It's no longer paint, it's like ink consistency. And make sure you get all the paint out of your brush as well because I used my brush to put it on this plate. So you wanna make sure that all of that thick paint is out of there and it makes a nice soupy little mess. Then I'm gonna take any, any hard surface and I'm gonna smack my paintbrush onto that, which is going to make snow. Oh, and then we have to also make the snow globe look. Because that's what kind of made these fun, I thought. Oh, that paintbrush is hard. I don't know where that one was. Okay. This is watered down paint. It's not quite as runny as the snow. Tell Wilson we miss him. I He's sitting right here, Judy. He, he knows that. He misses you guys too. All right, so all we're gonna do is we're just gonna make some circles in this outside perimeter of the ornament. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make it look like it's a reflection in a glass, in a glass globe. A snow globe.
See, there's one with and one without. Gotta wait until... This darn camera. Okay. There we go. Maybe a little bit better. So here's, this one's got a snow globe look to it, and then this one does not. So we'll add that snow globe look to this one. It's This one's got some really big drops of snow. So you follow the perimeter of the ornament. And then you're gonna do a break, and here's a snowflake, so I'm gonna use that snowflake to my advantage. I want them to be nice and bright white. So they're nice and visible. There's the snow globe look. Hey Janet from Shabalot. Welcome, welcome, thank you. I think it's Janet, is it Janet? All right, two more snow globey looks. So when you don't have a snowflake that falls right there, you can make your own. One more. These are really cute. I hope you guys will try these. When you're not DIYing. <laughs> it is Wednesday. All right, we are done. Now we'll see if I can move this <laughs> darn camera stand. Hang on. I just about break my wrist. Sheepers. Okay. Oh, wow. <laughs> that thing is crazy. We'll just push back. All right. Thank you, Sheila. Got to catch the replay on these hand-painted beauties. Oh, thank you. They are. They're really cute. So you, they're really easy. And now what I do is I paint the edges in Pennies from Heaven. I showed that on my first live. I can do it on this one. Just let me quick dry these and I'll show you how you can paint the edges. They have to be completely dry or you're gonna end up with a mess. So make sure that you wait a little bit or you take your heat dryer and you dry them so that all of your paint is dry. We're gonna stack them together. Hey Diane, thank you for those stars. You are entered into a drawing to win the 12 days of Christmas ornaments. Thank you, Judy. Love your churches, thanks, Carol. You look so pretty. <laughs> Gee, thanks. 
All right, so what I do is I stack them one on top of another, okay? Just like this. And now I don't like the edges not being perfectly like right here. I don't like that. So I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna squish them together like a sandwich. Oh, I need to grab a brush. All right, I squish them together like I'm eating a sandwich. I put my painted one up, away from me. I have my non-painted side towards me. Then I take pennies from heaven and I go right on the edge. For whatever reason, I can keep it clean on this side, but I cannot keep it clean on that side. That's why I hold it with like a sandwich with the back side, unpainted side towards me. And then you just go around the entire thing and I'm pinching, like you can see that it's open on that side. I'm pinching on the side that I'm painting on. So then I'll pinch and I'll paint that copper. Then I move my fingers and I pinch again And now I have my sandwich all painted copper and I pull them off. Some of it leaks through, but I like that, like this one. See how it leaked through on the side there? But I like it. That's it. Okay, tomorrow night we are painting mushrooms. The background for the mushrooms is, I thought it was skeleton key. I could have swore it was skeleton key because here's my mushroom and I could have swore it was skeleton key, but this is skeleton key. So I think what I did was I took my little black dress and my whatever white I was using and I made just a really light gray. So if you'll paint your backgrounds a light gray, it doesn't matter what gray you have. Mine are gonna be skeleton key. That's perfectly fine, just whatever gray that you have. And then I did have some cherry picked mushrooms and I had some marquee mushrooms. And then they have some Christmas lights on them. They're kind of fun. And then they also have the copper sides. These do not, those do. And there's my tree. If you're local, it'll be at the Haymow starting tomorrow, which is a store on Main Street. And it'll be there for the week. So you can head on in there and purchase your ornaments. Okay. Thank you all for watching. I will see you tomorrow night. And we're going to paint a mushroom on day four. Until next time, happy painting.